Welcome to Ebenezer United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we are so glad that you're here. Christians are often referred to as an Easter people, and today, on this first Sunday after Easter, this reference is completely appropriate, as our story from Luke's Gospel puts us on the road to Emmaus later on the day of resurrection. Friends, as we gather in this space, let us open our hearts and minds to encounter the risen Christ as we are called to this time of worship. Because there's more to the story. Whatever, Whatever part we have played so far, whoever we are and wherever we've been, whether we're certain of all the facts or still trying to figure things out, there's, There's more, more to, to God's, God's story. So come to hear the others, the perspectives and pieces, past and present. We, we come, come to remember and be remembered that we may recognize Christ among us. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let, Let us celebrate this good news as we worship together. Hello friends, Psalm 133 <laughs> is up for today as we enter the Easter season. And Psalm 133 is a celebration of community. What is it like when people are living together in harmony, in unity, aware of the rich diversity and uniqueness within it, but getting along? This is something that doesn't always happen, right? So imagine a time or remember a time when you felt this sort of harmony and goodness with your family or with your friends, with your congregation, with your neighborhood. That's what this psalm is talking about. Our song is called Sharing the Road, and your part goes like this. Sharing the road, how good it is. Sharing the road, oh, together. Sharing the road in unity. Sharing the road, oh, together. Sharing the road together, that's it, try it with me. Sharing the road, how good it is. Sharing the road together. Sharing the road in unity. Sharing the road together. Sharing the road together. Three verses, ready? Like fine oil. God blesses, blesses life forevermore. Oh, my siblings, what a holy thing to gather everyone. Here we go. Sharing the road, how good it is. Yeah, sharing the road together. Sharing the road in unity. Sharing the road together. Sharing the side in harmony. Here God blesses, blesses life forevermore. Oh my siblings, what a holy thing to gather everyone. Sharing the road, how good it is. Sharing the road together. Sharing the road in unity. Sharing the road together. Sharing the Here God blesses, blesses life forevermore. Oh, my siblings, what a holy thing to gather everyone. Come on, sharing the road, how good it is, yeah. 
sharing the road together, sharing the road in unity, sharing the road together, sharing the road, how good it is, sharing the road together, sharing the road in unity, sharing the We join our voices to pray. Set, Set our, our hearts, hearts aflame and open our eyes, O risen, risen One. We, we want, want to hear you again. From, from in the in beginning, the beginning to, to why do you look for the living among the dead? Unfold the mysteries of Scripture to us, that when we welcome the stranger, break bread together, care for others, or proclaim your good news, we might find ourselves in your story, remembering things we didn't realize were within us all along. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this first Sunday after Easter comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? He said to them, What things? They said to him, The things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago, but there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he were going on ahead. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us. It's nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Weren't our hearts on fire while he spoke to us along the road and when he explained the scriptures for us? They got up right then and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, The Lord really has risen. He has appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus had been made known to them as he broke the bread.
Hey friends, it's good to see you and I hope you had an amazing Easter last week and have been enjoying the really warm weather this week. So I have a question for you. Do you by any chance know what muscle memory is? Muscle memory, right? If you practice something a lot, it's like the muscle of your brain and the muscles of your body just kind of know it. They just kind of know it. I know my grandkids have been practicing their, their basketball post moves a lot, like the different things they need to move and do so that when they get into a game, they're not thinking about it. Because if you've got to think about it, you're going to mess it up, right? It's got to get to the point where you're not even thinking about it, that it just becomes natural, like your, your muscles know what to do. Kind of like I am so impressed whenever Mr. Dodds plays the organ and the piano at church, how his fingers just kind of move, and I'm like... I have tried to play piano. That is not an easy thing. Not only does it take a lot of practice, as you do it a lot, your, your fingers start to remember, those muscles start to remember where the different keys are. And you're not thinking so much about where your hands need to be. When you get really good, you don't have to think about it at all. You're just looking at the notes and your hands know where to go to play it. Same thing like when people play the trombone. Because it's not one of those things where it's like, well, exactly right here, like this key is C, right? And a trombone, you just kind of like have to practice so you know where the different notes are. And the trumpet too. But the more you practice, you're not thinking, okay, I have to press my fingers down a little bit. And then for this one, I have to go wide up. And then this one, this one goes down and this one is up. The more you do it, the more your mind and your muscles remember and it just becomes a part of what you know and what you do without even really thinking about it. Well, this muscle memory is an important thing we see in our story this morning. The, these two disciples, right? They were followers of Jesus. One of them is Cleopas, and then he has a friend that's with him. And they are so sad because even though it's Easter, and they heard that the women saw that the tomb was empty, and they heard what the angel said, but... It just seems like, like too unreal to actually be true. So they're walking along and they're just really sad. And this stranger comes up and is walking with them. And this stranger, as we read the story in the Bible, we know it's Jesus, but they can't see that. Maybe it's because they're so sad that their, their grief weighs them down and they, they can't see that. But for whatever reason, they don't know who it is. And this stranger, who's Jesus starts telling them all these things about the Bible and, and how what happened was really awful, but, but God is still working in this. He, Jesus is trying to show them this as he walks through all the stories of the Bible. And they just, they don't get it. They don't see that it's him. So they get to their, their village where they're going to get off. And he, Jesus goes on ahead and they're like, no, come stay at our house, please. It's going to be getting dark. Don't travel on that road by yourself. Just come stay by us. We'll have something to eat and you can sleep over and then you can start again tomorrow. Well, as they're sitting at table, right, Jesus takes bread, he blesses it, and he breaks it. And in that moment, it's like their muscle memory kicks in. They're like, wait a minute. We've seen that before. We've seen him do that on the hillside to feed 5,000 people. Some of them were there when he was in the house of really important religious elites and other people, right? Where he sat at table, he blessed bread and he broke it. And in the homes of people like Zacchaeus, that, that a lot of people didn't pay attention to, but God knows who they are. And Jesus saw them. They remembered this, oh my gosh, this breaking of the bread. Wait, that that triggered that muscle memory from the story that they knew. And suddenly they could see it was Jesus and then he was gone. So I know that sometimes it's like, oh, we have Sunday school. And I've heard this story before. Hearing the stories when we go to Sunday school and church, when we hear them over and over again, it, it helps our muscle memory, right? It helps our mind and our hearts to recognize these stories. And then when we're not listening to the stories, it helps us to see. It helps us to see how God is working in the world and working in our lives. So I pray, I pray that you will work on your muscle memory by learning more of the stories of Jesus and trying to see them playing out in the world as you show and you see others show God's love in so 
many ways. So friends, I miss you and I love you and I pray for you always. I hope you have a great week. See you later. Amidst the joy of the Easter season, I have to admit that I am kind of sad that this is our last Sunday in Luke's gospel. Luke is by far my favorite gospel, mostly because the writer is such an extraordinary storyteller, which we see again today in our scripture on the road to Emmaus. It is still Easter Sunday in this story, the two followers of Jesus are walking, trying to, to process all that has happened. They're still shocked and confused and, and weighed down by their grief, burdened by a sense of hopelessness that is evident in their response to the stranger who asks, who and what are you talking about? We had hoped Jesus was the one to redeem Israel. They had hoped, but now they do not. Many of us know how this type of grief and hopelessness can weigh us down, blinding us to whatever else might be going on around us. We had hoped that he would get that job because then we would have been able to stay in our home. We had hoped that the insurance company would cover that procedure. We had hoped the cancer wouldn't spread. The stranger on the road, however, was a lot more optimistic, even leading them in a Bible study as they walked, trying to encourage hope in Cleopas and his companion. They were polite and kind, letting their fellow traveler excitedly ramble on about the entire biblical narrative, not even taking offense, apparently, to being called dull-minded and foolish. When they came to their village, the, the stranger just kind of kept on walking, prompting them to urge the stranger to come and stay with them. It's going to be getting dark soon. Please, please just come for dinner and stay. You can continue your journey in the morning. Their grief did not stop them from being extravagant in their welcome or their hospitality. Thank God. 
because it was at table with this stranger that bread was blessed and broken and their eyes and understanding were opened and their hope was renewed as they recognized that the stranger was the risen Christ present at table with them. And then, then he was just gone. But their experience of him was profound and real, and it was still powerfully with them. Their low, their high, and their God, or Christ sighting, was too momentous to keep to themselves. It had to be shared. So against their own advice, they got back on the road and went to Jerusalem in that moment. They didn't stop until they found the 11 apostles and their companions and added their Christ sight into that of Simon, and they affirmed the early morning witness of the women. On, on Easter morning, the pronouncement of the angels at the empty tomb helped the women to remember, to recall what Jesus had told them. Now, through the experience of the risen Christ, the community of followers is being remembered, right? The women remembered. This community of Christ now is being remembered. They're being put back together. The community is being made whole as they each share their Christ settings and live into the renewed hope and new life promised on this side of the empty tomb. What we, what we see in the story of Jesus' resurrection is something that was also true in the story of his birth. That faith and an understanding of what God is doing in our lives and in the life of the world is something that is always just a little bit beyond what any individual can grasp hold of. Which makes, this makes the community essential. Remember back to Advent and Christmas? Mary is told by the angel that she will give birth to the Christ child. Joseph is also given this angelic message. Then Mary goes to see her cousin Elizabeth, and Elizabeth and the child in her womb confirm what the angel had said to Mary. When Jesus is born, the shepherds go to see the child and share what the angelic choir told them. And then you add to this the testimonies of Simeon and Anna at the temple when the infant Jesus is presented. And you, you see that, that all these people got a piece, a piece of this puzzle that, that becomes a picture that becomes the revelation of the unfolding story of what God is doing. But that only becomes clear as they all come together, as they find one another and share what they know. And the same thing, the same thing is happening here. Following Jesus' resurrection, Jesus' followers find one another they share what they have seen, and they trust one another's experience. As they, as they come together, as they are remembered, they draw on their collective deep memory of what God has done and what God has promised. They draw on that to make these current experiences mean something. And their recognition of what God is doing now, that becomes possible. It's the remembering, the pulling together of the community in which the full revelation comes into view. Pulling together the community. In 2017, Janice Hill became aware of the need for housing for Syrian and Rohingya refugees from a woman that she had met while her mother was a resident at Sunny Ridge. Seeking to live out our call to show God's love in all the ways we can. Ebenezer called on local churches, faith communities, and other community organizations 
to share in this common mission and purpose. What we didn't and couldn't have realized at the time were the ways in which the wider community was connecting, was was remembering in ways we hadn't experienced before. As we came together from so many different places with our diversity of knowledge and gifts, of resources and skills to find apartments, to furnish homes, to connect community resources, to learn to teach English as a second language, to help find employment for our new residents and friends, we recognized the gift and the joy of this remembering. Yet, this was also a new community. And the blessing, the blessing of friendship has been amazing. We often, in this group that came to be known as the Refugee Support Community, We often gathered at table for meetings. We gathered at table in the homes of of the refugee families, receiving the gift of extraordinary hospitality. We gathered at table in celebration and appreciation, and we sought to learn and to listen at least as much as we talked and attempted to teach. Our eyes Our eyes were opened again and again and again as we reflected on how big God is and how our hearts burned within us with a greater understanding of community and what becomes possible when we follow that prompting of the Spirit that continued to lead us to each other, that we may be connected and remembered in a way that made us whole. In a similar way, as COVID protocol separated us in our homes, our shared mission at Ebenezer to show God's love in all the ways we can, that gathered us, connecting us from many places and spaces to come together to help our neighbors in need over the past year. We did that, friends, by providing script cards and other assistance in phenomenal nurturing, hope-giving, and life-changing ways. From many spaces, we were remembered. We were connected by our love for God and neighbor. Our, Our Easter story from Luke's Gospel that continues this week When you put the two weeks together, you recognize that it calls us to to remember and to re-member, right? Remember and re-member. Because this is what it is to be an Easter people, a people of faith. Our last story from Luke reminds us that we are called to be engaged in the scriptures because that's where our deep memory comes from. We are called to be deeply engaged with community and to extend hospitality to strangers. Our faith calls us to be a people who are about the business of telling the truth about our God sightings, about our experiences of the holy. And we're called to listen to the truths of others including, as we see in our unfolding Easter story, the truths and the experiences of those who we might consider peripheral or, or on the margins. Those need to be important because all the God sightings matter so that we can understand the revealing of the gospel being lived out in our midst. As as all the pieces come together, we can more fully understand the story of the kingdom of God being lived out now. And, And this, this is what we can hang on to 
that, that moment that Christ set in in our story, that, that glimpse that Cleopas and the other get of Jesus, it disappears. But the community stays. The community is the place where the pieces of the story are remembered and remembered. The community is where the revelation is grasped and understood and lived out. The beauty, the beauty of this Emmaus Easter story is the way that it wants to, to pull us all together, the way it invites us to sit at the table and to tell our stories, to share our God sightings, and to remember and imagine. Imagine what through God is possible. So may the spirit of the risen Christ move us to accept the invitation to be remembered at the table, to come together to share our God sightings, all of us, all of us, because all the pieces matter and are needed for us to understand what God is still speaking and still doing with us, for us, and through us. Amen. As we are invited to be grateful and generous, we recognize that at times love can be so simple. If you have more than you need, you share it. If you are in community with others, you care for each other. If you have done wrong, well then do something to mend and repair it. With God's help, we can live this kind of simple and holy love together recognizing that our generosity and commitment change lives, even our own. People of God, let's pray together. As, As we bring these gifts to you, O God, God, we bring our lives with, with a renewed, renewed dedication to, to traveling with you. May the gifts we share, gifts of time, talent, and, and treasure, be a blessing in the living out of your kingdom among us and in the lives of others. Amen. Friends, as we take a few moments to focus on our life together, I ask that you please continue to keep Harold Henning in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, they did get good news that the cancer has not spread, but um, there has just been one complication after another since his surgery. So please keep Harold in your prayers for healing and for strength and for comfort. And please also keep Shirley and their family in your thoughts and prayers. As, um, please keep the family of Florence Bourne in your hearts and prayers. Florence went home to God on April 2nd, and a celebration, a private celebration of her life was held at Reinbold Funeral Home on Thursday, April 8th. We hold her family close in our hearts and prayers. And friends, 
as we look to the springtime of the year and lots of flowers bursting forth from the earth, there's lots of projects that people are starting outside. And we um, will be helping to, to provide space and place for Nick Schersel's Eagle Project here at church, which is an outdoor worship space on the southeast lawn. As his Eagle Project, he is raising funds for that. So you can participate in generously donating toward Nick Schersel's Eagle Scout Project. Um, you can do that online um, through the Give Plus app, or you can, if you leave um, your donation in the drop box, please note that it is for the Eagle Scout Project. And as we bask in the light and the, the glow of the joy of this Easter season, we pray that the light of God's love may shine forth through us. Talk of a brunch on Sunday, and you tell me it's so odd how every week you sing and pray, and yet you don't feel close to God. Then you yell at the waiter, working weekend double shifts. Maybe when you see God in Him, the fog will start to lift. Then will your light shine forth? Then will your light? Will your light shine forth just like Sunday morning? When will you stop pretending it's enough to pray for the poor? When will you start defending the hungry babies at your door? Cause when you stop using that big house just to hide Open the door to let your family come inside. Then will your light shine forth. Then will your light shine forth. Then will your light shine forth. Just like Sunday morning. Then you will be a repairer of. Because you love God and you practice what you preach Then will your light shine forth Then will your light shine forth Then will your light shine forth Just like Sunday morning Then will your light shine forth Then will your light shine forth Then will your light shine forth just like Sunday morning Oh, then will your light shine forth Just like Sunday morning May the love of God, our Creator, the grace of Christ Jesus, our Savior, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.